you wouldn't think 18th century military architecture or 20th century supply chain logistics would hold lessons for 21st century cell biology. But they turn out to have some surprising similarities, and it all comes down to the math. In the 1780s, a French mathematician named Gaspard Monge proposed a way to calculate the most effective strategy for moving large amounts of dirt from one place to another with the least amount of effort. The optimal transport equations he derived proved very useful for military engineers, especially those working for Napoleon Bonaparte, who used Monge's math to build military fortifications as efficiently as possible. Fast forward 140 years. Just before World War II, Leonid Kantorovich, a Soviet economist, was asked to work out the most effective way to distribute goods from factories to warehouses and stores. His work laid the foundation for a new branch of mathematics called linear programming and earned him a Nobel Prize. Both Kantorovich and Monge had been trying to solve the same basic optimization problem. How can we move a large number of things from point A to points B and C and D in three-dimensional physical space at the lowest possible cost? But what does all this have to do with modern biology? Think about a group of cells. At a particular moment in time, each cell is in a particular state, with some genes turned on and others turned off. Those cell states aren't necessarily fixed, Cells can move from one state to another, not in three-dimensional physical space like dirt, but in the 20,000-dimensional gene expression space. With technologies like single-cell RNA sequencing, we can take molecular snapshots of cells in expression space. But we can't follow cells over time as they move in expression space from snapshot number one at time one to snapshot number two and number three and so on. We only have still photos, not a movie. This is where optimal transport comes in. If we take many snapshots of a group of cells at different time points, we can use optimal transport to fill in the gaps and map the most likely path the cells take as they move in expression space from one state to another. We do this by calculating the shortest path between states, the one that represents the lowest cost to the cells. In essence, optimal transport lets us turn these snapshots into a movie, one that can run forward in time to understand whether cells in group A most likely give rise to cells in group B or C, or backward to see where a group of cells most likely came from. Biology is full of processes where cells shift from one state or type to another, either naturally, like in an immune response or tumor growth, or artificially, like in stem cell reprogramming. By viewing genomic data through the lens of optimal transport, we can model these processes at molecular resolution, learn the fine details of how they work, find new opportunities to alter their outcomes, and gain a better understanding of human cellular development. We've already used optimal transport to learn new things about how stem cell reprogramming works, and we're excited to apply it to all kinds of other biological systems.